Perseverance. 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 Perseverance.
it was more of a hobble because I like every step I was just oh, this is awful and I was going so slow and it was no fun throughout even just the next year I started the medication that has worked in kind of quelling the, the symptoms. Everything kind of fell into place and the medication I'm on is working. And so the faith that I had through that whole process is really what worked because if I didn't keep pushing, I never would have, I never would have gotten back on the podium. I wouldn't have even tried if I was in that dark place the whole time if I didn't say. No, you have to get up. You have to keep doing what you love. This rheumatoid arthritis is not going away, but I've been functional enough that I've been able to start doing something that I've always wanted to do, which is aerial silks. I've always loved the circus, and I always kind of wanted to be in the circus somehow, some way. Uh, Cirque du Soleil was just incredible to me. Watching those performers took my breath away every time. Aerial silks takes a lot of strength, especially grip strength in your fingers. So I've had to uh, put a lot of trust and faith in my hands recently because from that first day I was hooked and climbing that silk up to the ceiling and then doing a trick and coming back down. I was like, I could do this. Every once in a while, you know, my fingers are kind of sore coming from class, but they work and I can hold my entire body weight up with one hand in the air on a slippery piece of fabric. Now, life is difficult and we all face challenges from time to time and living the Christian life represents even more challenges because we're up against real adversaries at all times. We're up against the ubiquitous anti-Christian worldview, our own indwelling, the, the remaining indwelling sin that we must deal with, and the wiles of Satan himself working against us. There are times when Christians feel quite feeble and, and quite weak. Uh, the Christian may at times doubt his, his very belief in the reality of God and his promises to him. There are times when Christians are tempted to give up the whole Christian enterprise. And this is where the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints comes in so handy. And what is this doctrine? Well, it's this. Those whom God has accepted as His beloved children, who have been called and set apart by His Spirit, cannot ultimately ever fall away, but will persevere in that grace to the end and be eternally saved. This perseverance of God's children doesn't depend on their own striving or effort, but on the unchangeability of God's good pleasure to save them. It's based solely on the merit and intercession of the person and work of Jesus Christ alone and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, who is the down payment of their eternal life with God. I'm reminded of an old hymn called A Debtor to Mercy Alone, and it ends this way. I shall the end, or no, 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 it goes, I to the end shall endure as long as the earnest, which is the Holy Spirit, is given. More happy but not more secure, the glorified spirits in heaven. Wonderful a reality there, that the glorified spirits who've already died and are with the Lord are no more secure than we who are in Christ right now. And what we're really talking about here is God's perseverance to save sinners like you and me. More, much more than we're talking about our perseverance to stay in the faith. I, I'm, I'm taking that from the very words of Jesus who said in John 10, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. I give eternal life to them and they will never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. And yet, believers are admonished to use all that God has given them in the course of the Christian faith. God's sure and steadfast commitment to his children to save them in no way relinquishes, relinquishes them from the duties to be watchful, to continue praying, and to make use of the means of grace that God has provided. Peter tells us in his second letter, listen to this, apply all diligence to your faith and stimulate your life. Moral excellence and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and brotherly kindness and finally love. He says, be all the more diligent to make your calling and choosing sure. 
For as long as you practice these things, you, the Christian who's been called by God, you will never stumble. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be abundantly supplied to you. So what's abundantly supplied? Our entrance into the eternal kingdom, if we persevere and use the means of grace that God has supplied for us. It's by these things that God enables Christians to continue in the faith. And that's why it's so important for Christians to engage in regular fellowship with other Christians, to hear the Word of God preached regularly, and to participate in the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. You know, Scripture is replete with promises that we should never give up, even when the winds of doubt and fear blow hard against us. Promises such as uh, Romans 8, those whom he predestined, called before ever they were, loved before ever they were, he called, and those that he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2, God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation, through being set apart by the Spirit and belief in the truth. The truth, well, the truth of the Gospel. Uh, Hebrews 7, He is able to save to the uttermost all those who come to God by Him, Him being Jesus, seeing He, Jesus, ever lives to make intercession for them. And lastly, Jude 24, God is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. You see, it's because God will never leave us or forsake us that we can have assurance of salvation and persevere until the end. Now, that's not to say that Christians won't have rough patches along the way. I mean, look behind me. It's kind of a marsh, kind of a swamp-like area. John Bunyan, in his Pilgrim's Progress, called it the... Uh, the slough of despond or the swamp of despair. And, and Christians can run into that. I mean, try to run through that, that marshy area back there. You're going to have some trouble. And that, that's the Christian life sometimes. We persevere, but sometimes we fall down. We get lazy spiritually. We can even fall into serious sins. And for a time, lose some measure of God's love and, and comfort. And we may even hurt and abuse others so as to bring temporal judgment upon ourselves. But these trials and imperfections will in no way disqualify us from our union with Christ if we're trusting in Him. And being united to Christ, by God's grace, we will be safe and secure on that final day. What God promises, He will deliver, for His very honor is at stake. Now remember that Luther said that if the world was coming to pieces, was falling apart, He would still plant his apple tree. Well, I think he said that because he is so assured of the promises of God that he will be led into eternal life with him and that all creation will be recreated as well. Remember that great passage in Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heavens and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth passed away. Now from other places in scripture, I would want to say a renewed heaven and a renewed earth because Nothing is wasted in God's economy. He's going to reclaim the perfection and that pristine condition of creation pre-fall of Adam. That's what's going to happen. Now, perhaps you're not yet a Christian and you have no assurance of life after death, let alone a new heavens and a new earth and an ever-increasing, eternal, joy-filled life in the presence of God. Well, here is the best news that you can possibly hear. The free offer of the gospel is yours for the taking. Jesus says this to you in Matthew 11, 28. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, I began explaining the perseverance of the saints. I began explaining that doctrine by saying, those whom God has accepted as his beloved. Well, how does one become accepted by God? Well, it's really simple. Admit your sin and your inability to measure up to God's perfect standard of righteousness on your own. 
Throw yourself on the merit of Jesus Christ alone, and He will give you rest for your weary soul. Trust in Him to save you from God's coming righteous anger, righteous wrath against all unrighteousness, and you will be accepted as His child. And if you are a Christian, stay strong in the faith. Keep moving towards the goal of eternal life. Use the means of grace that God has provided. Be watchful, always prayerful, and take the words from Shakespeare's Macbeth and screw your sanctified courage to the sticking place. In other words, persevere and endure. Perseverance. 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 Endurance.